Professor Clark, in, sorry. Okay, no, no, I know, I know. Professor Clark is with, uh, with the Minister uh, Zlatar right now, but he had uh, um, mentioned uh, Barbara Tuckman, uh, who wrote in 1962 uh, a very important book, uh, The Guns uh, of August. And that book uh, uh, made a very deep impact on President Kennedy, who, was, uh, who just finished uh, his second year, or was about to finish his second year of uh, being President of the United States, and he wasn't really very happy with uh, uh, the results of his presidency, thinking that he might maybe stay in the White House uh, just one turn. And uh, he read Barbara Tuckman's book and recommended to everyone in the White House, or of his stuff, to read, uh, to read it, uh, being afraid of two things, as we read in Theodore Sorensen's uh, uh, memoirs of his years as uh, the speechwriter of President Kennedy. Uh, how it uh, all happened, uh, one German chancellor asked. Well, if we only knew, the other one responded uh, uh, while the war was raging uh, in 19, I don't know, 17, uh, I think. And Kennedy was afraid that that or something like that might happen to him and his presidency, that uh, uh, the world will simply go to war and that uh, there will be no space for di diplomacy uh, any, any longer. So he said, well, we are not to allow that. We have to, uh, to do everything possible to allow historians to be able to reconstruct how, what, what, what was the uh, process of decision-making um, in the White House. Uh, when the October missiles crisis uh, uh, with Cuba uh, finished, he said, well, the guns of August should maybe get the missiles uh, uh, of October uh, sequence, uh, uh, saying uh, or showing that World War I was deep in his uh, uh, thoughts and that he was connecting 1914 and Sarajevo with Berlin of 1962, uh, and the atomic uh, 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 nuclear weapons that were actually uh, coloring uh, the world situation at that time. Two decades after President Kennedy and this what I just described, Jimmy Carter gave an interview facing uh, Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, uh, the hostages crisis in, in uh, Tehran, and he said in 1980 that the world in 1980 looks just like world uh, in 19, or Balkans in 1914, that a current situation is equal to the situation after the assassination uh, in Sarajevo. No one wants to start the war, especially not the world war, but everything we see is heading in that direction. Mr. Clark, as I said, is not here, but allegedly uh, we were able to, to, to read that in different uh, uh, newspapers uh, after the crisis in Ukraine started uh, a couple of weeks ago, was invited by the German Chancellor and uh, Minister of Foreign uh, Affairs, uh, Frank-Walter Steinmeier. Uh, uh, both of them have read his sleepwalkers to talk about the crisis of 1914 and to see whether the situation in Ukraine in 2014 bears resemblance and uh, how can they compare and what can uh, be learned from uh, the crisis of 1914 for the current situation in Ukraine. So is Sarajevo of 1914 more similar to Ukraine of 2014 or maybe Berlin of 1962? And what do historians actually do when they approach any historical uh, event? How does it uh, work actually? Uh, that was partially, and what is history as a science after all, after all or a discipline uh, after all? Uh, I will uh, tackle several episodes from 1920. So I was focusing and using uh, uh, abundance of material uh, basically in this building uh, from, let's say, 1924, 1928. 44, 54, 64, and so on and so on, or 88, uh, 68, and so on, trying to, to see how in different parts of Yugoslavia, uh, different media uh, was reporting on, on World War I, and how that perception was uh, uh, changing. 
Before I start, uh, I haven't mentioned yet uh, the Archduke in, in, in Sarajevo. I will give you just one example how history is very, how it's very neat to use history or maybe quote unquote abuse uh, history. After a couple of days, after Austria had recognized independent Croatia, a group of Croatian politicians, uh, I would say well-minded, uh, at least the first minister of foreign affairs of Croatia, of democratic Croatia, who is still around, uh, was at that time heading his, uh, I think now non-existent, cri cri uh, Christian People's Party, Dravko Mršić. What they did, a couple of days after Croatia was recognized, they went together with the Habsburgs to Arstetten and laid a, a flower to the grave of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, telling that unfortunately his violent death prevented the idea, which allegedly Fran Franz Ferdinand had, of giving uh, a large autonomy to Croatia and neighboring countries within the Austria-Hungary, which is hardly a sovereignic uh, ideal, or, or it seems a little bit uh, unstately, I would say, at, uh, at the time, especially because Croatia was just recognized as an independent state. But it's interesting how cer certain patterns or metrics are still uh, are there and how people think within the same uh, frameworks. Uh, in 1928, uh, Josip Horvat, one of the leading Croatian journalists uh, at that time, uh, wrote uh, a very long article in uh, Jutarni List. Uh, describing what was probably at that time uh, Croatian view or predominant view in Croatia on uh, the events of uh, 1914, starting with 1903, surprise, surprise, telling that uh, 1903 in Belgrade and uh, uh, the assassination of the king uh, uh, Obrenović, uh, the mission of Croatian prime minister uh, Kuen Hedervari uh, and uh, uh, the Saloniki trial of uh, uh, Trna Ruka uh, were three things uh, that, at, and that they all combined or were something that the Balkan Peninsula was the most actively penetrating overall political life at which time uh, Balkanic history of Balkan Peninsula was penetrating uh, the line of political, li of political life of Europe. Half a century uh, uh, later, uh, it was a uh, quarter of a century later, it was clear or visible that without uh, the bloody night of uh, 11th of June 1903, the 29th of May, uh, according to the old calendar, there would never be uh, the tragical event of 1914, as well as it is impossible to think that without the mission of uh, Kuen Hedervari, there would ever be the 1st of December 1918 and formation of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and, and Slovenes. Uh, but soon newspapers ceased to write about World War I uh, at all because there was another assassination in Belgrade that June when Stepan Radic was uh, uh, first wounded and then, and then killed. And then Croatian deputies uh, decided not to participate at any manifestations in Belgrade, although the 10th anniversary of the end of World War I was celebrating. And of course, people came from France and the leading generals and those who were fighting, fighting on the, on the uh, Thessaloniki front came to, to, to Belgrade with the Belgian uh, soldiers and the king was there and Mestrovic's monument was erected at that time. But Croatian politicians, uh, uh, including especially uh, Svetozar Pribicevic of all, who wrote uh, an article in, uh, uh, in, in Jutarnili said, well, we are not going to Belgrade, and who has to go, then uh, uh, he has to go, but manifestations should be spontaneous. It shouldn't be like it was in Austria-Hungary that people were being ordered to go to celebrate. Uh, and we have nothing really to celebrate uh, uh, in, in, in Belgrade at, uh, 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 in 1928. Stepan Radic was still alive at that time. But interestingly enough, a uh, couple of days after that, or a couple of days after the boycott, another 
or something that came out of blue uh, uh, was on Croatian newspapers or the cover pages of Croatian newspapers and that was the story of Milan Geroc, uh, the whole campaign that was started. Geroc was uh, a highly positioned Austro-Hungarian soldier in Serbia during the occupation. But after the war in 1918, he became, uh, he switched sides and uh, joined uh, the S S Serbian army, becoming a very important officer in uh, the newly created forces, served in Belgrade. But then suddenly they said, well, 10 years after the events, someone is accusing him of uh, being uh, the main slaughterer of, of Serbs during the occupation. And the campaign that was started, as uh, at least Croatian side was reporting, that was that it had a very strong anti-Croatian campaign. Meaning that now, after the assassination of, uh, uh, of Stepan Radic, they needed something to, to, to balance. And when they went, where they went, they went to, to history and took uh, uh, Geroc as uh, one of uh, those who might be very useful to prove certain things. Uh, uh, there. In 1944, I have to be a, a little bit quick, but I'll give you, uh, I'll conclude uh, at the end. In 1944, totally different uh, circumstances. Um, an article, uh, and of course at the time, in June of 1944, when uh, the, the authorities of the independent state of Croatia had many other concerns on, on their uh, mind, um, an article was published in which, the, in which Ivan Shubashic, who just recently became prime minister of uh, the royal government in London, was compared to Frano Supilo, uh, uh, one of uh, uh, former leaders of the Yugoslav committee that existed uh, during the war, or f functioned during the war, first in Paris, then in, uh, in, in Rome, then in Paris, then in London. Uh, uh, and in 1944, Croatian uh, Ustasha media said, well, one of those two, Supilo, who is by far more superior to Ivan Shubashic, totally uh, uh, revealed what the problem was leaving the Yugoslav committee in 1916 and now we have Ivan Šubašić who is joining uh, the Serbian government uh, in London in 1944 uh, uh, not seeing how futile his uh, attempt uh, is and how uh, uh, Croatia is already an independent state and so on and so on. And then after that uh, together with uh, really amazing articles of German successes on the Western Front. Uh, three articles were published by Montenegrin, uh, who uh, uh, was blaming primarily Serbia and the Serbs for everything that happened in 19, uh, 1914, uh, giving, I would say, the official line of, uh, of the independent state uh, of, of Croatia. At the same time, of course, uh, shortly before the war, uh, the, those who became the leading force uh, uh, during the Second World War and in the partisans, uh, the, the, the partisans, Yugoslav uh, communists, if you, if you wish, were having different ideas. If we are to believe to Cyrus Salzberger, uh, a famous journalist who was reporting from Yugoslavia for decades uh, in a book published in 1964. He was uh, talking in Belgrade with two very important historical figures, one a little bit more. One was I, uh, Ivo Lora, Lola Ribar, and the other one, uh, the other one was Gavrilo Princip's nephew. And both of them said, I'll quote, although we oppose terrorism as a method, we have the same strength and fighting spirit as did Gavra and the youth movement of his days. We will defend our country to the end against who, uh, all who aggress us. Uh, it sounds very modern, I would say, uh, if they were already so sophisticated about distinguishing what terrorism is and, and, and things. In, in, but as I said, it was published in 1964. Uh, at, that, at that very same time, another important uh, uh, revolutionary who was killed in 1944, Veselin Maslesha, was already hiding, working on his book on uh, Mlada Bosna uh, uh, movement. That book was published in 1945, 
Uh, and that book uh, with the for foreword written by Milo Angelas, and that book de facto became a basis of how Yugoslavs were seeing, or how in, in Tito's Yugoslavia, uh, uh, the whole Sarajevo complex was, uh, uh, was seen. Uh, if you wish, uh, a, a, a plaque that was uh, dedicated to Gavrilo uh, in Kingdom of uh, Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes, Kingdom of Yugoslavia, was removed by the NDH authorities during the Second World War, but then immediately uh, the youth of Bosnia uh, wanted to, ret uh, the, after the war, wanted to return it because Gavrilo was uh, so similar to so many national heroes that were. Uh, jumping at tanks in the same way as he was jumping at a car uh, of uh, Franz uh, Ferdinand. Well, but that sounds all clear in a way, and uh, the first uh, big article on, uh, in 28th of June 1954 uh, is basically following this line that uh, not really stress in the ethnic in a leading Croatian daily newspaper, not stressing Gavrilo Princip too much, stressing the uh, 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 Prussian Junkers, and uh, that uh, uh, German uh, uh, Tsar, uh, Tsar, German Emperor wanted to put everyone in his Prussian uh, 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 military uh, booth, and so on and so on. But that was actually the only article published. In 1964, already there is, not, there is hardly anything on World War I, and it's the 50th anniversary in leading Croatian newspaper. Uh, 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 they are saying, well, uh, there will be plague uh, uh, put in Sarajevo. In 1974, 78, 88, 84, there is nothing in Vjesnik, leading Croatian newspaper, on World War I. They have space for historical articles, because you have plenty of uh, uh, articles being published on different historical events. History of city of Karlovac, uh, for instance, uh, uh, from the beginning until the end and so on. You, know, you may, may say, well, of course, it's a daily newspaper. Why is that important? But if you compare that to the newspapers in other parts of Yugoslavia, then you would see totally different picture. Uh, in 1980s, in Serb leading Serbian daily newspapers, you had 72 uh, days of the whole page on the defenders of Belgrade 1914-1915. 46 pages on the Thessaloniki front, on Tser, on Kolubara, different books being published. And something that's even more important, uh, that was, uh, that came to, uh, yeah, this is for instance uh, what I wanted to show. For instance, you have, as I said, space in newspapers. This is what they published on, you know, on what happened on the 28th of, of June, the, the, the uh, assassination in Sarajevo. But as you can see, there, are, there is space. They could have uh, published something dealing with World War uh, I in, in, at that time. It would be maybe nice and neat, but it didn't happen. The, the, uh, the end of war, capitulation of, uh, uh, of Germany, it, it isn't, it's, obviously less important for the editors than uh, the elections for the Constitu Constituanta in 1945. Okay, someone might say, well, there were other magazines, there were weeklies, and there were weeklies that were publishing only articles connected with the past. This is one of those. In 1970s, you had Focus. Focus was publishing only historical articles. Well, there is Verden, you see, uh, the longest battle of the century, but obviously less important than other things. And this one, so you have one or two articles per year on World War I. But then we come, and I'll, 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 I'll cut here, then we come to 1980s. Uh, in, in Serbia. This is interview, which was one of the most prominent, I would say, in defining the way how to see World War I in, uh, um, in, in eastern part of uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, and also something that was uh, to, to point how World War I was abused by current political uh, atmosphere or current political uh, elites. 
In 1988, French were celebrating a big anniversary of uh, the World War I. Prime, uh, President François Mitterrand invited, and for the first time in 30 years, uh, Prince Charles came to participate uh, there. Yugoslav sent 12 uh, soldiers from Thessaloniki, the, the war veterans, together with almost 100 other people, relatives, and so on and so on. And that became a scandal, a scandal that you cannot find in Croatian newspapers, for instance. But in Belgrade newspapers, it was screaming that they were not treated by a Croatian guy who was ambassador of Yugoslavia at that time, Bojidar uh, Gagro, that they were not treated respectfully. Uh, that is coinciding with another more successful attempt to replace ambassador of Yugoslavia in the United States, which happened. Uh, Živko Kovacevic was a, a good Yugoslav ambassador. Gagro actually was less good, uh, to be honest, but uh, Gagro uh, remained. Uh, uh, Gagro remained, and that was uh, the way how it was, how World War I actually, no one, the, the newspapers in, in Belgrade were talking a lot about World War I, but actually that wasn't the topic. I will not mention at all political theater that was booming in Belgrade in 1980s. What is interesting, and that's the last point, it's interesting that one of the most prominent uh, plays that was playing from 1981 and, until 1991, uh, Solun, Solunci uh, Govare of Antonio jo uh, uh, Georgievich uh, is again in, in Belgrade and now they uh, end in Banja Luka. Uh, 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 you have a scene when uh, their actors are bringing the flag of the uh, of Kingdom of Serbia and then not only the, the people from the audience were able to kiss or should kiss uh, the flag. In 1981, 82, 83, for Yugoslavia as it was, it was more than just a theater. And the same goes for so many other theatrical uh, plays. In Croatia at the same time, nothing on World War I. We published, I think we had two books on the history of World War I. The most important still, Pierre Renouin from 1930s. Believe me, that was the only one. And that's the difference. I, I'm, uh, I gave you the idea, I, I guess, uh, in question and answers period. I could maybe elaborate a little bit more. Thank you.